Hello, this is Astrati Strawman, back again for another video. Today I'm going to be going over the ladder usage for the Little Cup. So what this is all about is that out of the total battles that they have throughout the entirety of the month, so this would be only two weeks for us because Scarlet and Violet released only two weeks ago, but this is the end of the month. We're getting into December now, so we're going to have a new usage stats at the end of December. This is for November. We will have the t we have the total amount of battles, and then each team is given a certain amount of weight, and then each Pokemon will be given a rank on how much it was used on winning teams. So if you look here, this is the raw stats. You can find that if you go up to the top. Uh, Marty has, you can find the Gen 9 stats discussion thread here, but then also if you go here, it'll have the stats. So you can go there, get the stats, download them if you want to see them in more detail. But he already has a good amount of the information here. But it'll go over the usage percentage, the raw percentage, real percentage. This is all to say that, okay, so we do have this usage percentage, but if a whole bunch of people just spam Ma Magikarp on ladder, it'll mess up the rankings, and then the people will think, oh, well, Magikarp's actually really good when it's not. So they weight it based on how often you win as well. So you see here for Mistrevis, it has usage 65%, but then you have the raw percentage and the real percentage. They're all to distill down, all right, so what's actually good in the tier and what are people using because it's a fad? And that'll be shown soon enough. I'll also try to go over what some sample sets for each of the more popular mons are. However, some of these mods have already been banned. I've already done a video on what is banned, so you can go and check that out. But for now, I'm just going to go over, well, what made these so popular and why are they so good? So first and foremost, we have Mistrevis. This is our first banned Pokemon. Thank God it's gone. Uh, but it would run Eviolite, typically, and it has a lot of really good boosting moves. It has Nasty Plot. It's got Calm Mind. It's also got Substitute, so that way you can avoid status. But then in addition to those, it also had Dark Pulse, Dazzling Gleam, and Thunderbolt. And all of those would synergize really well with Terra-type. So as we know, Terra was added in this generation. And what it allows you to do is that it's a one-time use for any member in your party, but only one of them that you get to change your type into something else. Now with Mistrevis, it could viably run Dark, Fairy, or electric for a few reasons. You could also run Terra Blast Fighting as well. But what Terra Blast does is that if you're terrastalized and you so you Terra type into a certain type, for example on Mistrevis you would want to do fighting. And then Terra Blast will become that type. So it's like hidden power from a previous gen, but it requires that you use up your Terra type in order to be able to use it. However, what Mistrevis could do is that if it went with Terra type electric, it didn't need to use Terra Blast because it already has Thunderbolt on baseline. So that means that even though Terra type would be like, oh yeah, you get this additional fighting coverage, well, sometimes you didn't even need to use it because you could use Thunderbolt. And then the same applied for Dazzling Gleam and Dark Pulse. And the reason why you would run, run, want to run Dark Pulse, Dazzling Gleam is that Giraffe Rig exists and it was a really good counter to it. And what Giraffe Rig also liked to do was run hidden, so Terra type fighting. Really liked running that. And the reason for that was because Pontiard exists, and we'll get to Pontiard in a sec. But what you could do is that you could either do Terra type dark in order to beat Giraffe Rig on baseline, because it has normal psychic typing, it's weak to dark, but it also will blank your Shadow Ball. So you could run that for Giraffe Rig. Or if you're scared that Giraffe Rig is going to go Terra type, then instead you can do Terra type Fairy, run Dazzling Gleam, and that'll be able to cover that. In addition, its stat line was really good for the tier. It has 60, 60, 85 defenses, which for context, if we go to last gen, one of the best Pokemon there was Minfu, and it's got 45, 50, 50. And it was considered premier, for more reasons than that, but like having significantly more bulk than even Minfu is a really big deal. So it was really hard to kill, it also has 85 speed. Due to stack compression, that'll allow it to get up to 19 on baseline, and that's exceedingly fast. It'll outspeed a lot of things, Pontiard, uh, Toadstool, Glimit, 
does it have speed? Diglett, but it doesn't really matter. There's a lot of things that it outsped naturally that if you wanted to outspeed with something else, like a Pawniard, which would be really good against this, it's not fast enough. So what you'd have to do is that you'd have to run a Choice Scarf on it, and Choice Scarf boosts your speed by 1.5 times. So all of this is to say that if you wanted to beat Mistrevis, you had to play really carefully around it because of how fast it was, how good its coverage was, and how often it can boost up. So it was always really, really dangerous to deal with. It also got banned recently, I think it was a day or two ago, but all of that made it really, really annoying. And one of the things that made it especially really hard to break down was that Eviolite, which the defense and special defense boost, that's really, really good. But typically what you could run is that there's a move called Knock Off. It's really popular in all the tiers. It's especially good here because what it'll do is that if you knock off an item, then they can't use it anymore. And if it's Eviolite, then that means that they essentially get a minus one to both defenses, making them exceedingly less bulky. But that basically didn't exist except for seven Mons. And that's not terribly reliable when none of them outspeed Mistrevis. As a result, it got banned. It was really, really good, but I'm glad it's gone. Second up, we have Girafferig. This one I also think is going to get banned, but it's exceedingly good, not, not most especially because of its stat line. 70, 65, 65, which is really good bulk. It has a good attack stat and a good special attack stat, and that's really important when you consider that it's got a great move pool. It's got Psychic Fangs. It's got Earthquake, it's got Trailblaze, which is a new move introduced in Generation 9. It boosts your speed by 1, so that means that even things like Mistrevis couldn't outspeed it after it got a Trailblaze boost. It's also got the new signature beam, signature move Twin Beam, and that one was kind of useful, but you can also just use Psychic. The main reason why you'd want to use it is that you have the new Pokemon Glimmit, and what a lot of people like doing is that they ran Focus Sash, Toxic Debris, and then you could start setting up hazards like Stealth Rock or Spikes, and then also a physical attacker like Pontiard tried to come in to deal with this and not have to get poisoned, then it would just set up Toxic Spikes anyway, and it would have been fine. But with Giraffe Rake Twin Beam, you could, subvert, you could subvert the entire issue because it doesn't proc Focus Sash. But because of how good the attack and special attack are, you can run either of Physical or Special. In addition, it also gets Nasty Plot, it gets Calm Mind, same as Mistrevis, so that means you can also boost up if you wanted to, meaning it's really hard to deal with. And then also, it has really good abilities, it has Early Bird, so Sleep Counter drops by 2 instead of 1. One of the best answers to Giraffe Rig's special attacking set is Toad School, because it's Tentacool, but it's got a different typing, and because of that typing and its massive 100 special defense. It could take some hits from Giraffe really well, and also Toad School is one of the few things that actually gets knock off, so you could reasonably knock this off and be able to deal with it. But also what it can run is Spore, and Spore makes your target fall asleep, and Giraffe Rig having Early Bird means that Spore very often does not trade well. And what I mean by that is Spore takes a turn to use, and because of Mycelium Might, it's going to have low priority. However, that does mean that you ignore abilities. So, you will spend one turn of, of you will spend one turn to make your opponent go to sleep with Spore. But the problem is with Giraffe Rig, if it has Early Bird, then one turn's all you're going to get. So you're just trading neutrally. You're trading one turn of them asleep for one turn of you being able to do anything that you want. And most of the time, you just want to knock off into it anyway to remove its bulk and also deal super effective damage. But you can't do that if it's going to... Spore is significantly less good if it's just going to wake up in a turn. You'd much rather have it sleep for two to three turns, but because of early bird, the max you can ever get is two. So it's not very good. But the important part is that it also gets Sap Zipper, which means that it has a grass immunity. Toad School's Mycelium Might bypasses this. So you can still spore it, but is it a risk that you're willing to take that Giraffe Rig is going to wake up in one turn, or is it going to sleep for possibly more? And even then, if you get the spore off on it, it could just get unlucky and then you get one turn of sleep. But it's really, really messing with you, because do you try to go for the spore, bypass the sap or prevent it from setting up for a turn? It, it was hard to deal with. But that doesn't mean that Toad School still couldn't get progress on it. 
But then also, because of early bird, you could reasonably run a Calm Mind Rest set, meaning that you just boost up a lot, go to sleep because you have really good bulk, and then you could do positive nature there. Something like that. Just get really, really bulky, get a whole bunch of Calm Minds, and then sweep through teams. And then also, for whatever reason, it also gets Reflect and Light Screen. So you can run as a support Pokemon as well. So it fit on practically every team. If you wanted to run Hyper Offense, it could either do Nasty Plot or Reflect, whichever one that you wanted. If you wanted to run Balance, you can also run a Wish mo uh, wish Passing set. I forgot to get Wish. Uh, but you can do like Wish Protect, Psychic Fangs, and then Crunch. Because Giraffe likes to run Psychic Coverage because it's a good stab, but also other Giraffe resist it because it's also Psychic. And you can't use Ghost type moves into it because of the normal typing. So one of the best checks to Giraffe Rig was Giraffe Rig, so you'd like to run Crunch. But also this even fits really well on an anti-hyper offense team because Psychic Fangs destroys screens, so that means that your opponent has a harder time setting up. So it's it's this wonderful Swiss Army knife of anything that you can want it to do, but a lot of people think that it's broken, and for good reason. Third on the list, we have the all-star of Little Cup that's been good in every single generation that it's ever been in, Ponyard, and it's been in every generation too. And the reason for that is that its bulk is really, really good. 45, 70, 40? I mean, that's really bulky on the physical side. But then also because of the dark steel typing, it has a lot of really valuable resistances. So that means it can be a pretty effective special wall, especially against Mistrebus and Giraffe Rig, who were Ghost... Ghost Stab was really common, and then it had to run Terra Blast Fighting specifically for this, as I mentioned earlier. But if it wasn't Terra tearing into Fighting type, you could really effectively wall Giraffe Rig and Mistrebus as long as Giraffe Rick was in the physical set. But it was the best check to both of them. And it also has Stealth Rocks for added utility. It's got Night Slash to be able to hit Giraffe Rick and Mistrebus. Excuse me. And then you also have Brick Break for also breaking down screens. You have Iron Head in case you want to have a nice, strong, neutral effective. Like, Night Slash is still good, but Iron Head has the 30% chance to flinch and a higher base power, so that's also still good. And then you can also run Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch is one of the best things that it has, because on this 85 attack stat, having a stab Sucker Punch is always really nice for revenge killing things. If a Giraffe Rig got out of control and didn't have a Terra type, you could revenge kill that. If Mistrebus didn't Terra type, you could try to revenge kill that. It's always really good. So it had a lot of functions, just overall. Also, it could run Choice Scarf, because its speed tier allows it to get up to 16, so that means you can run Choice Scarf Night Slash, hit both Giraffe Rig and Mistrevis before they can hit you, as well as having like this really good speed tier as well, because a lot of things have a hard time reaching 24. Like Even though we have like uh, Toad School, and it also gets Rapid Spin, and that'll boost its speed, you could still do Sucker Punch on the Scarf set if you wanted to. It's got a lot of flexibility, but it's really hard to do badly because of its resistances and bulk. It's a wonderful mon. Alright, so next we have Dunsparce, and Dunsparce was banned before Mistrevis, and the reason why it was banned was because it had really obnoxious sets that made it really easy to bypass your checks through sheer luck, and that's because you can do something like this. Coil, Roost, Glare, Headbutt, so you can glare down your opponent, whether it be a Mistrevis or Giraffe Rig, to make them slower than you. And then you can just use Headbutt repeatedly, and you, because of your ability Serene Grace, that doubles your chance to flinch. So that means that Headbutt goes from a 30% chance to a 60% chance, and then also because your opponent is paralyzed due to glare, that means that you have another 25% chance to make sure they don't even move. So it was really, really unhealthy. And even though it's got this really bad speed tier of 45, so it only gets up to 15 speed, it's got 170, 65 bulks, which is even better than Giraffe Rig. And Mistrebus, technically, but... It was really hard to take down. And then also, if you wanted to, you can run uh, Coil Amnesia Rattled, Roost, and then you can run, like, ter a, a Terra-type of your choice. And then you can just start sweeping through teams because one of the things that 
Jun Sports really liked to do was come in on Mistrievous because Mistrievous is a ghost type and it could wall it reasonably well. So it would just take a whole bunch of hits from that and then if you tear it into a different type you could activate a rattle boost which means that your speed is raised one stage if hit by a bug dark or dark or ghost type attack. So Mistrievous would want to use Shadow Ball against it if it terror typed because that's its strongest move so that boosts its speed and that means it can just sweep your entire team. It wasn't very competitive, and it was banned for a reason. I'm glad to see it gone, but I'm sad to see that even though Dunsparce finally got an evolution, it was it, you still can't use it because it was just too good. Why can't it ever find a place to belong? Next, we have Toad School, and you know how in the trailers they had like Wiglet. It's like, oh well, this is like a new form of it's it's like Diglet, but it's not a new form of Diglet. That's what happened with Toad School. It's tentacle, tentacle, yeah. But it's a mushroom now, and it's grass ground type, and that grass ground type is really, really wonderful. And it's got some pretty good stats in, as well. 40, 35, 100, it's alright, but it's really, really specially bulky, and that's what makes it matter a whole bunch more. Because when Mistrievous and Giraffe Rig are using Calm Mind and Nasty Plot to boost themselves up, having a reliable wall that has a lot of utility in Rapid Spin, Knock Off, Spore, and then... You can run Power Whip if you wanted to to hit Mistrievous really hard. You can run Earth Power in order to hit Ponyard really hard. You have options, and it's really, really flexible, but it's it's some of the best utility in the game because of Rapid Spin plus Knockoff, which, if you're in the higher tiers, you know how good that is because of Cyclozar. Obviously, also Shed Tail, but that combination is already really useful because no hazards, plus you get to remove items, especially in Little Cup when things want to keep their Eviolite. It's fantastic. And then it also has a really good speed tier as well. 70 speed means that it'll get up to 17. And then you can run either of minus attack or minus special attack, depending on whether you want to go like power whip. If you want to go earth power, that all depends. But it's really flexible, really tanky, and it's it's got a lot of utility. You can do a lot with it, and it's pretty incredible. Next we have Glimmit. I mentioned it before, but it Toxic Debris as an ability is pretty crazy on, on baseline of just, oh yeah, if you get hit by a physical attack, you set Toxic Spikes. So it also got Stealth Rock, Spikes, and then if you wanted to, it also runs Toxic Spikes, but then you could run like Power Gem, because for whatever reason I decided to give this 105 special attack, which is frankly ridiculous, but then you can run like a Sludge Bomb, Sludge Bomb. Yeah. Sludge Bomb, and it also gets Explosion if you want to do that. The reason why you'd run Explosion is that if you're running the, the Focus Sash set, and you get hit once, you set up Toxic Debris and Stealth Rock or something. In order to prevent something from being able to rapid spin your hazards off, if it's slower than you, you can just explode. Your opponent can't get rid of your things, and then you can go into another mod on the back. It's really good as a support Pokemon, but then also it can do some other weird stuff because it's got a 48 HP stat, and if you lower that down to 19, it can reasonably run a Life Orb set, and the reason why that's important is because it also gets Rock Polish, so that means you can get faster than your opponent, and you also have this really good special attack that gets up to 20, and then you probably want to run yeah, max speed as well, and then you could run... You could reasonably run either Modest or Timid on this. Get more power or get more speed. Does that actually... It gets up to 22. Oh, already. Uh, but because of how Life Orb functions, it's one-tenth of your max HP after every attack. So because you're down to 19, you have 19 charges of Life Orb instead of 10. And that makes it really fantastic. And then you can do the Rock Polish set. You have like Sludge Bomb... Power Gem, and then if you want to, you can run, like, uh, some people actually run Mudshot, because to counter lead other Glimmit is that, oh, well, Glimmit's gonna take my Sludge Bomb or my Power Gem, so in order to make sure that it doesn't just set up for free or whatever, you run Mudshot, and the lowering speed is already pretty good. So this is kind of flexible, despite the fact that what you want, really want to use it for is just hazard setting. But it's got a lot going on, it's pretty cool. 
I'm hoping that it's going to see more usage now that Giraffe Array, well, not Giraffe Array, Mistrevis is gone, so you can kind of use it more offensively instead of just setting hazards. But we'll have to see how the meta turns out. It's a pretty cool mon, and I'm expecting big things from it. Next we have Diglett. And at first I thought this was going to be kind of unviable, because like, well, what about Mistrevis? Isn't that really a hard stop to it? Like, obviously you'll have to use a Terra type if you want to get over it and all this other stuff. But then you remember that it's it's still a Diglett, and it's got these stupid stats that allow it to get up to 20 speed. So it just goes blazing fast. Uh, it pairs up surprisingly well against Ponyard because it can get Substitute, and then you can do Earthquake. And then you can basically nuke a Ponyard from Orbit, and it can't do anything about it because it has to predict of... Is it gonna is the opposing Diglett gonna go for Earthquake on baseline or are they gonna substitute? So what do I do? And with a life orb you can really do a lot of damage to it and then open up your giraffe rig under the special attacker. But then what it also got is Sword Stance for whatever reason, because Game Freak didn't think that Diglett was powerful enough, and they gave it a boosting move. Before it had Hone Claws, and Hone Claws is fine, but they gave it Sword Stance. Why? Uh, they also gave it Rock Blast, and they gave it Stone Edge, and I'm more okay with those, because then it's like, oh, well, you run Rock Slide in previous gen anyway. And obviously, like, having Stone Edge is still really good, because if you want to hit something like a Larvesta, which is on the list, but before you would want to hit Larvesta or a Flying type with that, and like, okay, yeah, but that's kind of okay, because it's not too big of a difference, but I get the feeling that, especially with Sword Stance, and the fact that you're hitting on 200 instead of 150, because if you're doing a super effective Stone Edge into a Rufflet, for example, instead of using Rock Slide, which would do 150 because it's boosted by two, now you're doing 200 because of Stone Edge. It's gonna be crazy. It's so ridiculous. And also because of Life Orb shenanigans, it doesn't even have to lower its HP in order to get to there. It can just run some HP in order to have 18. And you're still good. And the Arena Trap ability is super strong. It's been banned in a lot of higher gens for being uncompetitive, but it's fine in Little Cup because Diglett's the only thing that gets it. And these stats are 10, 25, 45. That's nothing to write home about. But it's... Uh, I'm expecting this to just be so ridiculous because it's got such utility because it's got Sucker Punch. You can also do Terra Type... Terra Type... Dark. And then you can do Terra Blast. So that way you can hit Giraffe Rig even harder. It makes you immune to impotent prankster thunder waves. or No, not thunder waves, but like parting shots. So that way you can keep it trapped. Make sure it's gone. As well as just being a sucker punch resist. It's It's got a surprising amount of flexibility. And it's truly come into its own again. It's so weird. But somehow so fantastic. Oh my gosh. Daylight, you are one crazy whack-a-mole, I gotta say. Uh, also, I probably should say... Uh, well, just to explain to people who don't understand. Arena Trap prevents opposing mo Pokemon from switching out. And what that's important is... If my Ponyard is up against a bad matchup, like it's up against Toad School... And it doesn't want to take an Earth Power because it wants to stay healthy... Then it can always just switch out into, like, I don't know, my own Toad School into Dunsparce. And then if I want to, like, Giraffe Rig. I have options that I can go to. That means that your opponent has to predict a bit. Like, okay, so I, if I have a Rufflet in the back... And it's a Flying type... And Toad School wants to Earth Power into my Ponyard... Okay, so what do I do? Do I want to Earth Power? So that way I can hit the Ponyard right in front of me, assuming that my opponent is going to stay in to get more damage on Toad School? Or do I want to knock off into Rufflet? So that way I can actually hit it. But then if I knock off, Ponyard is going to quadruple resist it, and it's going to hit back pretty hard. What do I do? Do I switch? Like, do, do, Does my Ponyard switch? Do I go to Rufflet? And what does Toad School want to do? There's all these really really detailed options of what exactly is your opponent going to do. With Diglett Arena Trap, your opponent can't switch at all. So if it's still like uh, Ponyard versus Diglett, then I can always force the 50-50 between am I going to substitute and he's going to Night Slash or Sucker Punch on the substitute or Sucker Punch Earthquake. It can't, you can't switch to Rufflet and be like, oh no, my matchup's much better now. I don't have to lose my Ponyard. It just makes you instantly lose it. And it's very frustrating to play against at a lot of higher tiers for good reason. 
All right, next we have Satotl. So Satotl is surprisingly good, but what you have to remember is that during the first part of the generation, it's it's evolution, Satitan. Its ability is Slush Rush, and the reason why that's important, also it's got some wonderful stats, but the reason why that's important is because for the longest time, people, it was not slow co Snow Cloak as its ability, it was Slush Rush, and that means it's like, oh, well, that means I can just use it as a hail abuser. So I can just do, like, uh, Ice Spinner, Play Rough, Earthquake, all that sorts of stuff. And you would just be really fast because you also have Snowbird in the tier, so that means you can set snow automatically. But that was discovered to not be the case. But it was spammed on ladder a lot because that was already really good. But then people are like, oh, well, you know, I can run... Uh, oh, gosh. You would run a run... You would want to run Berry Juice because it also gets Belly Drum. And Belly Drum is a really good move. For those who don't know, what it'll do is that you use you lose 50% of your maximum HP in order to maximize your attack. So that means that if I'm running what is it? If I'm running max attack on this, it's already gonna be really strong because 16 and then multiply that by I want to say four times it's like 64 something around that range it's always really really powerful and that means that although you lose half your hp you become this really deadly sweeper if you're fast enough but then it also gets ice shard and our shard is really important because it's priority and it's stab and one of the things that needs to be brought up when it comes to belly drum plus priority is that magby from last gen got banned at the near the very end of the semester the not the semester the the generation because it had belly drum mock punch and obviously it still had a, a much better speed stat so you could get up to 19 but it was still really really strong because how do you revenge kill this if you you can't just attack into it you can't use oh well I'll just use diglet and I'll just earthquake into it you can't it has ice shard so you have to sucker punch instead and even then it can also use substitute and that makes prediction much harder. It has a lot of things going for it. But then also, we didn't know that berry juice was illegal for the longest time. So what it ha what it turns out is that you can only use orange berry because berry juice is not in the code. And the reason why you want to use orange berry or berry juice is that when your HP stat is 27 and you can use berry juice, which restores 20 HP flat, then you can belly drum and then get back up to full and it's automatic so you can do essentially a full restore in the middle of the battle but because you have to use orange berry now it's not as strong because like if you're at this high of hp and then you belly drum down and then you're down to 14 and then if you want to consume your berry you get up to 24 but if you get hit by like oh well i'm trying to set up on toad school because i don't think it'll be able to hurt me too much and it uses earth power on me and I drop down to, let's say, 5 HP. If I have berry juice, that means that you get up to 25. So it just makes your things so much bulkier. And it was really popular in the title for that reason. But now you can't use that. You have to use orange berry. And you also have to mess around with your IVs a bit because belly drum... You mean belly drum rounds down, I believe. So if you are 27 HP, it'll go to go from 14 to 13, so you have to run enough that you're at 26 HP, so that way you'll actually get down to 50% and proc your berry. Otherwise, I don't think this is too terribly good, and the, the unfortunate part is what made it so good was having Slush Rush, but even the Belly Drum is just like, oh, well, that's really good, but then the issue is that, like, okay, but Pontiard exists and it's got Sucker Punch, and there's a lot of things like Diglett as well that has Sucker Punch. There's a lot of priority running around the tier, so although it could still be really powerful if you manage to get like screen set up or you manage to get like, a tailwind, I don't think it's going to be too good going forward. I think this has new toy syndrome, and especially with having slush rush for a little while, that made it really really good. But unfortunately, Satoddle, I don't think you're going to be too viable later on. You're probably going to drop to Little Cup UU. Also, quick thing of what's Little Cup UU? So you know how in the higher tiers you have OU and then you have UU. And all that sorts of stuff of, oh, well, I want to make sure that I play to the to the level that the mons are capable of. Well, we also have that for Little Cup, because 
why not? If we're if some people don't like the main little cut meta, why not just go to the the lower powerful one and see how it works there? So it's probably going to be pretty all right there because as a belly drummer, that's still going to be really good. Plus ice shard, it might get banned from from the lower tiers, but I don't expect it to really rise up to be a little cup OU Pokemon. I'm expecting it to possibly be banned line, but we'll have to see. Next up, after Satoddle, we have another newcomer. We have Flittle. And Flittle is known for being really annoying because it has stored power plus speed boost and it's also got Calm Mind. That's all this runs. You don't really want it as a support Pokemon. You run Terra-type Fighting. You can also run Terra-type Fire or something else in order to be able to bonk Pawniard. But you do stored power, Calm Mind, and then you have... I think that you would definitely want to Roost, and then you can do Terror Blast. And then you just put a whole bunch into defense. And then you just get a whole bunch of speed boosts, calm mind boosts, and then you sweep the team. That's all this does. It's very straightforward, but the issue is that it can be kind of easy to set up. We'll have to see whether or not this is broken later down the line when we get some more bans, because we had Misrebus ban, and I think that definitely made it worse that Misrebus got banned because now people are like, oh, well, I want to run more physically offensive mons instead of specially offensive because Misrebus is no longer as good. Well, it's got banned, excuse me. But there's a lot more space in the builder to run physical attackers instead. So Flittle may drop down in usage as a result. We'll have to see. However, it's really strong because you can speed boost, you get a speed boost. Speed boost raises speed. Who could have seen this coming? But you, you get faster, and because your speed set's already really good, it makes it hard to revenge kill you without priority. And then you can also use Roost to play mind games. You have Terra type fighting to resist any soccer punches that are coming in anyway. It's not shiny on this, like, we don't know yet. But it made it really hard to deal with, and we'll see if it's still broken as things go on. I'm thinking it's going to be really strong, but Terra is what makes this definitely broken. You always have to keep this in mind because it's so fast and so strong because the store power combined, but we'll have to see as it goes on. Next we have Rufflet, and Rufflet is banned from last generation because it got close combat, and that's really strong. However, uh, Rufflet doesn't always want to run that. It has Eviolite, and then you can also do Terra-type Ground if you wanted to. And then you can do like you can do Aerial Ace or Brave Bird, and then you have Hustle, Aerial Ace, and then you do Terror Blast. Actually, you could do like Aerial Ace, Terror Blast, uh, Bulk Up Roost if you wanted to. You can also do uh, instead of like Aerial Ace or Terror Blast, you can do Agility, something like that. You have options to boost with, and then you also have a really good attack stat, and then 70, 50, 50 Bulk off of a pretty decent speed tier. It's it's a really good mod. And we've known that it's really good for a while, especially in the previous generations. Because it's got Hustle, and then also has Aerial Ace, and then you can also run a Choice Scarf set on this. Because it's pretty decently fast, it gets up to 16 speed. So like Pawniard, you can viably run a Choice Scarf set on this, and then you can do like uh, Aerial Ace, Brave Bird, Close Combat, U-Turn. And you want to run Aerial Ace because of the Hustle accuracy drop. And having Aerial Ace as a pretty reliable stab move that'll be able to hit your opponent is really strong. Excuse me. And then you can run Terra Flying on this. To make your Brave Birds and Aerial Ace even more obnoxious to deal with. Both sets are really good. And it's kind of harder to be able to tell versus Rufflet what to do. But I think this might get banned. We'll have to see because we got some other more obnoxious things. But this is still really good with Aerial Ace plus Coast Combat. You got to be really careful about this. And maybe there's some strategies that we don't know about yet. Like maybe we can use Marion E or something else in order to be able to deal with this more effectively. But time will tell. It's pretty straightforward and there's not too much to it. But remember that anything that has a setup move can and will set up on you on Little Cup. It's it's very dangerous. Be careful. Next we have Mastiff. I'm hoping this guy actually gets kind of good because he's got Intimidate and Stakeout. 
Also, big tip, don't use Intimidate and Little Cup all that much. The reason for that is that Ponyard really likes running Defiant because Sticky Web still exists right now, so you still want to run Defiant. But if you run Intimidate, it's not going to be hitting much of what you really want it to. So Stake Out's much better. I think what people are really liking to run on this is Choice Scarf, and then you can do uh, Terror Type Fairy. And then what you can do is you have a really strong Crunch, and then you can do Play Rough. And the reason why you want Crunch Play Rough is Crunch for good stab, but then Play Rough to hit a lot of Terra Fightings. And it's really fast, and because of Stake Out doubling your damage versus a Switch In, it's really hard to play around. And then you can run uh, Psychic Fangs if you want to to get rid of screens. You can run Fire Fang or Ice Fang if you want to hit some stuff. Fire Fang, especially for Pawnee or something like that. But you have options, and then you can run a pretty nice Scarf set, get some attack, special defense, speed. And it, it is, I think it's going to be passable when meta settles more and we don't have to worry about like Giraffe Rig and or Rufflet. I think it's going to get a lot better, but I'm not sure... Because although it's got like some good stats, 60, 60, 51, that's above average bulk. And it's got a decent speed tier, it's not awful. Uh, I'm not sure how good it's gonna be. Because although having like pure dark typing is pretty nice, and then you don't get prankster stuff and like that. Uh, I'm not sure. Because it could just get outclassed because you have other better scarfers. Like, what if you want to run Scarf Mask, if, why wouldn't you run on like Scarf Pontiard? But then you could probably do like double dark. I have this Mastiff as, like, my Scarf Pokemon, and then Pawnee as more defensive. We'll see. It's interesting, and I'm liking where it's going, but I don't think it's anywhere near where it wants to be yet. Also, it can't run a, a boosting move, so there's that. It's interesting. Also, it gets Trailblaze, so maybe you can use it in, like, lower tiers if it drops and make it, like, a, a sweeper, because it's, it's got a good offensive stat. Almost as good as Pawnee but... We will see. Uh, next we have Metatite. Uh, Metatite was banned, and I covered it in a previous video. But it has pure power, and then you just buff up its, H its attack to maximum. You can put a Choice Scarf on it, and it'll start breaking things, and you can't deal with it. It's got close combat now, so you can't do high jump kick shenanigans of, oh, ha, ha, you went for high jump kick, and then you lose 50% of your HP because you either missed or I go to a, a ghost type. One sec. There we go. Uh, but you have close combat, and then you also have Zen Headbutt for good stab. And then also you have Bullet Punch if you want to hit something really hard, really fast. You have Fire Punch, Ice Punch, and you also get Thunder Punch. Yeah, Rock Slide. Like, you have way too many options to be able to wall this reliably, and the Fighting Resist in the tier weren't having it, so it got banned pretty early on. Not very competitive, not very fun. Oh, well, if, if it was if it was so powerful, why did it have such high usage rate? That's because it won a lot of games. So, that's where it is. Uh, yeah. Even though... Oh, uh, probably another reason why it's so high is that on the first day of a new generation, you're probably going to want to play a lot of games because there's a lot of new people like, oh, what's the new stuff? What's the new stuff? What's the new stuff? And then people are just going to play a whole bunch of the Brokens, and that's all that's going to happen. So there's that. Next we have Krogunk. 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 There you are. Uh, I don't see why this is used very much. Like, cool, it has dry skin, and that means it's pretty alright on rain teams. And and, uh, and as a counter to rain teams. But its stats are just very bad. I'm expecting it to drop to Little Cup UU sometime. Like, cool, it's got, like, Nasty Plot. It's got Bulk Up if you want to do that. It's got Vacuum Wave. And Vacuum Wave is good priority because it's one of the few specially offensive ones. And Kurgo can use it viably because it's got Stab and a pretty decent special attack stat. But just why would you want to use this? Like, maybe also as a T-Spike Absorber because of Glimit. And it's got Sucker Punch, so you can run double priority. But it's just, it's just too disappointing. 48-40-40 on bulk is bad. But then, like, also your speed only gets up to 15, and then do you want to sacrifice your attack or special attack? So do you want to have like, a weaker vacuum wave, a weaker sucker punch? It's It's got too many things going against it. And even with the dry skin boost, it's like, okay, yeah, cool, that's, that's nice, but, like, 
I don't think that you want to run this solely if you want to counter rain. You got other options like Paldean Wooper, which I think is genuinely better because it's got a uh, pretty good typing that gives it a good amount of immunities. It's got water absorb. So that means you can just blank an entire type. And then obviously it's not as bulky because it's got 55, 45, 25, but then you also have recover and then you have gunk shot plus earthquake. Earthquake. Come on now. Earthquake. EQ. And then also you can run haze on it. So that way you don't aren't just set up food for a giraffe rig or a flittle or something like that. And it works out. I mean, having dual priority in Vacuum Wave and Sucker Punch is nice, but I feel like you can do significantly better and its bulk isn't anywhere near good enough to justify it. We'll have to see though. Next we have Snover, and Snover was used because it's got Snow Warning. And Snow Warning is now for Snow instead of Hail, so that means it gets a defense boost instead of dealing damage per turn. And that's kind of interesting, but I'm not sure if it's going to be any good. We'll have to see if Igloo Shrew gets ported over, because we have Sandshrew, Sandshrew Alola. And that was the premier sand sw Snow Sweeper from last gen, because it got Slush Rush, and it's got a whole bunch of really nice stats to go along with it. Uh, but Snover was your best check to rain, because people liked running rain. Shock surprise. Uh, but you have like Giga Drain, you got Blizzard. If you want to run a physical set with Sword Stance, you can. Take it back to Generation 4, and it's actually kind of hard to deal with because it's got Snow already make its defense even better. So you have options. And it's not even bad because you also have uh, Ice Shard. So you got some priority there. Oh, that's actually. That's. Some pretty good bulk, 60, 50, 60? I never actually realized how good that was. Obviously, its speed tier is kind of whack, but I don't think that you mind too, too much because this is meant to be a defensive Pokemon and you can kind of take some hits. You have Giga Drain for some recovery. If you want to go really crazy, you can do Sword Stance and then you have Ice Shard and it's all right, but uh, I think it's not bad overall. I can definitely see why it's used. I'm expecting it to stay with the caveat of it'll probably be much better when Pokemon Home comes in. It's not going to be really all that great for now, except for counter-teaming Rain, and that's kind of it, so we'll have to see. But it's cool. It's definitely interesting, especially because it's got Snow instead of Hail, and it's also got some funny numbers here. But we'll see what's going on, but... It's solid. I would not recommend using it unless you're like, dang, I'm really, 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 really weak to rain. And you want to get rid of rain as soon as possible because they don't have an auto setter. But it's an idea. Go for it. Try it out. Next, we have Surskit. Uh, Surskit's notable because it gets sticky web. End of, end of, that, that's it. All right, cool. Next one. <laughs> all right, so in all seriousness, it's, it's a good sticky web user, although it's bulks kind of bad. 40, 32, 52. That's not what you care about. What you care about is the fact that it goes fast. It's it's 17 speed. It's got passable bulk, and then you can also run a Focus Sash on it if you want to. And then you can run Swift Swimmer Rain Dish if you want. It also gets uh, Rain Dance, so if you want to run Sticky Web Rain Dance on a Rain Team, you can. The reason why it's kind of low, despite the fact that Sticky Web is still really good, is that Mischievous didn't really care, and that Ponyard is really, really strong in meta right now. So what was the point of running Sticky Web when Mistrevis doesn't really care and can deal with a lot of Pokemon anyway? And then Ponyard has a really powerful Sucker Punch afterwards and it's really hard to deal with. So what are you gonna do? Uh, but it's it's a, it's all right. It's got a passable special attack stat so you can run like uh, Blood Buzz, Giga Drain. You can also run Icy Wind. So that way you can mess around with opponent's speed tier still get a good amount of support going. And then if something's faster and it's just like, oh, well, uh, Giraffe Rig's trying to set up on me using Nasty Plot, I can just Icy Wind it instead, and then it's slower than me, and then if I want to, I can do like a Bug Buzz or something. You had options. It was okay. I've used it a few times, but I think it's kind of underwhelming, especially because Rufflet. I forget about Rufflet. Yeah, Rufflet's uh, immune to it, so you can't even deal with it. So you have like three of the top threats, not really caring too much about webs, so... It's okay, I'm expecting it to get better, but I'm not expecting it to be too good. And one of the reasons why it's also not too good is because, shock surprise, Quaxley is the best of the three starters. I don't know how. It's so crazy. 
because you think like, oh, it's just a duck. It's got like these middling stats that are okay. Nah, it's the best one because it gets rapid spin plus moxie, and then it's also got aqua jet, roost, and liquidation. And then also, if you want to run some flying coverage because it gets that, you can also run brave bird or something like that. It's weird. Why is this so good? Why is it the best one? And it's still hitting pretty hard off of a 65 base attack stat, and then you also have Liquidation, which is still really good. Why is this mod so good? And then uh, also what hurts webs is that you have this as a Rapid Spinner, you also have Toad School as a Rapid Spinner. Surprisingly, you thought like at the beginning of the generation, you look at the Rapid Spinners, and it's just like, oh, well, Burke might bound sweet Pineco. Pineco's okay, but look at that speed tier. Roly Coley. Who's gonna use Roly Coley? And it was like, Quaxley and Toads was like, don't worry, we got the entire meta for you, fam. And you just run those two. Uh, Brandon we'll get into later. But like, Quaxley and Toad School just single handedly made Hazard Stack kind of okay at best. Uh, it got significantly better now that Mistrevis is banned, so you don't have a really good spin blocker, but. It, it still shines through despite all that because you can run like a good amount of bulk. It doesn't need too much speed because A, rapid spin, and B, you want to be using this defensively anyway. And then if you get a moxie boost and start sweeping, that's, that's gravy. Like, it, it makes it really hard to deal with because although it's supposed to be this defensive mod, it just is really powerful anyway because it gets moxie boost and rapid spin boost and speed. What is this? Why is it so good? Oh, it's such a weird mod. It's so funny. It's lovely though. Use Quaxley if you want. It's actually pretty good because it's a water resist and that means that you don't have to deal with rain teams. Uh, also, quick aside, what does rain want to run? Uh, you run like Buizel and then you run Psyduck because uh, Psyduck got Nasty Plot. It's a popular team style because it's very much just uh, burr hyper offense. I just do that. And then you have uh, Shrudel, which I'll get to Shrudel in a sec. But you can set Rain with some Prankster Mons and it was alright. But also lack of water resist due to limited decks means it's kind of hard to deal with. Next we have Ghastly, and you think, oh, well this is banned from last generation. Why is it so bad? Uh, Misrevis existed, and it made it very redundant. Plus its speed here isn't as good as Misrevis's, so it doesn't get up to 18. I mean, I'm sorry, not 18. It does not get up to 19, which means that it instantly loses versus Giraffe Rig, and that was really bad. Its special attack is still really good, and you can still use it kind of effectively because it does have like nasty plot, and then you can run a choice scarf set if you want on it. You got options. But also having levitate as immunity plus ghost means that you got three, so you can find opportunities to switch in, and you're not affected by spikes, so you got options. Music, please keep playing. Thank you. But it was just kind of bad, not because it itself is bad, but because Mr. Evis was just so much better than it that it was really hard for it to compete. It should be good now. Uh, you got like Shadow Ball, you got Sludge Bomb, and then you got like, uh, you still got like T-Bolt. So you can do some of the shenanigans because you also have Dazzling Gleam, and then you can do Dark Pulse. So you can do stuff like, you can use it as a mini Mysterious, but it's not gonna be as good, but it'll still be all right. Uh, it also gets uh, the punching moves. So that's fun. It's got Sucker Punch, it's got Will-O-Wisp. You can, I wanna see somebody use one of the really old sets from Generation 5, which was Black Sludge, and then you could do Trick. And that one was already, like, I always really liked that one because it's like, oh, well, it's Ghastly. It's gonna be this, like, really fast attacker. Nah, it's fine. And also, there's not a lot of knockoff in the metagame. So you might be able to use this again. It'd be kind of cool, and I'd like to see it happen. But only time will tell. Uh, as it stands, Ghastly's a pretty good mod. You can use it pretty, uh, pretty all right. It's got good stats in special attack and speed. And it's going to outspeed a lot of stuff. Just be careful around Sucker Punch Priority. And then if you want to, you can run Terra Blast Fighting. Uh, Terra Blast. And then you can do like Will-O-Wisp. Something like that. And that'd be kind of cool. So, you got options. And then next we have Shrudel, as I mentioned before. This might drop later on. But it's got some really good abilities. It's got Unburden and Prankster. So, Unburden, you can use it on like a Swords Dance set if you wanted to. I've recently seen some Mirror Herb, and then you can do Swagger on this. You got options, and it can sweep because it's got a uh, knockoff gunshot. shot. And it's okay, uh, it's also walled by Pawnee Art, so you have to be careful of that, but having a strong knockoff, even if this doesn't sweep, 
if you manage to get like a swagger off and then also substitute if you want like swagger substitute and then just go really fast with a burden and hit kind of hard it'd be kind of all right uh, i don't think it's super super good because its stats are kind of lacking 40 35 35 defenses aren't great its speed's good because it gets up to 18 so that means you're going to tie ghastly and it's got a good matchup into it because uh poison normal resists both of ghastly stabs and if you want to you can take it black sludge and that's kind of funny but uh it's okay you can also run this as a support set with prankster because it's got a pretty good speed tier but then you can do like damp rock rain dance and then you've got other things that you can do, like it gets parting shot, parting shot's really good. You can do fast encore, you can do fast copycat. You have really good options that you can use with Prankster and it'll work. I'm just not sure if you're gonna wanna run it too often because of how bad its bulk is. But be sure to try it out, figure out what you wanna do. Do you wanna do some swagger, mirror herb stuff, unburden, or do you wanna use it as pure Prankster and then you can do rain dance support? And then also because it's got a uh, knockoff, oh, it's also got, in addition to knockoff and encore, it's got U-turn. So it's got a whole bunch of stuff going for it. Its moveset is great, but let's see if its stat line can manage to not be hampered by that. Good luck if you're using this. It's a cool mod and I like it, but I'm not sure how good it is. Impidimp. Oh, actually, hold on, before I go into Impidimp. Just well, why is Shrewdle sign up kind of mid? Well, A, poison type stab isn't fantastic because you don't hit very much, and anything that would want to stay in on this doesn't really want to anyway. You don't have a good way of dealing with priority a lot of the time, and Ponyard is just such a hard wall to it that it's hard to get over without a lot of team support. You can do it, but good luck. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, next we have Impidimp, and Impidimp is... I hate this mon for really good reason, and that's because it like, reflect light screen, and then they give it parting shot. And then also from last generation, it has Drain Punch. So congratulations, if you wanted to deal with Ponyard, which is the best way of dealing with this because it's got Brick Break, as well as not being affected by Prankster Parting Shot, so it's stuck. It's got Drain Punch too. So, even then, you could possibly just lose your Ponyard because it Drain Punches into you switching in, and you take a whole bunch of damage. Uh, this is the set that it runs. It, it, it was okay last gen because i think that it had some things going for it but parting shot parting shot is what makes this absolutely absurd good luck trying to deal with parting shot and all this stuff it enables so much jank because it also has light clay so you want to use nasty plot mischievous or nasty plot calm mind on giraffe rig or a bunch of other stuff like agility bulk up rufflet this was the main thing that you had to watch out for and all the other stuff because likely would give it eight turns of half damage so good luck dealing with it i think it's going to be a lot less good going forward because most of the mons that really liked being set up mons can't use berry juice anymore so they can't just get up to full so now they have to use orange berry and it's less good you can possibly make it work but impidimp is quite literally a little devil as it says so annoying to fight against. Good luck if you ever see this, and I do not like you if you use this. Uh, next we have Mercury. Mercury is also banned because it's got some crazy stuff going on, I mentioned in a previous video. Uh, but Eviolite Prankster, and then you can viably run uh, Nasty Plot Tailwind, Dark Pulse, Air Slash. And that's just something you could use, but then you can also do Brave Bird U-Turn instead, and use it as a your utility mon and then you have sucker punch and it's impossible to know whether or not you're attacking from your 85 base attack or 85 base special attack good luck it's gonna beat you it also had the not the best but it's it's got an exceedingly good speed tier of 19 so that means you could even tie with mischievous and stuff like that so it's really strong really powerful and you can predict what set it was running and also because of tailwind it enabled stuff like oh boy it enabled metatite and all this other stuff to be really really obnoxious because sometimes things are really balanced by the fact that they're really slow and that was what metatite was kind of going for but murkra said nah you're flying i'm gonna fly you to the moon and then it did and then they both got banned 
it, there's not too much to say about this. It was just very broken for baseline because of how good stats were. And then also its bulk isn't even abhorrent either. 60, 42, 42. You can make do with this. Next up after Murkrow, we got Magnemite. And Magnemite's been a staple for a pretty long time. I'm not sure if it's too, too great in this metagame, but like it's got a lot of options because before you can run like a hidden power fire power of fire and then you could hit like Pharisee whatever but uh, you can do some stuff with this it's pretty all right you can run a choice scarf set and then it also gets analytic so analytic means that you get 1.3 times power boost if it's the last to move in a turn and this also imply applies to switching out so if your opponents like oh you're gonna flash cannon and then they go to their own Quaxly in order to take the flash cannon better it's still gonna take more damage because of analytic and then you can run Flash Cannon, Steel Beam, which it still gets, which is kind of a right. Uh, Volt Switch, Thunderbolt. You run something like that on the Choice Scarf set. It was the same as last generation, and it's good. But uh, what it also liked running is that it gets the ability Sturdy, and then with Berry Juice, it could run a Sturdy Juice set, and that could take quite a few hits. Does it get Recycle still? Oh, it doesn't get Recycle. Oh, okay, well, never mind then. Uh, but you can't use Berry Juice plus sturdy, so you can't do sturdy juice anymore, but uh, it's alright. It's got a good defensive typing and a good stab combination, so it allows it to threaten a lot of things. It doesn't like seeing Toad School all that much because it's a really good special wall, but you can still chunk it really hard with a steel beam, especially if it switches in. So it has options, and it's not awful, but it might drop, it might not. We'll see. Uh, next we have Mankey. Mankey. Uh, this is a Choice Scarfer. One of the best things about previous gen was that the, the fighting types were just really, really good. So that meant that stuff like Pawniard and all this other stuff... Well, like Pawniard, Pharisee, Porygon, they were all significantly worse despite being very bulky because one of the best things that you could run was a fighting type. So it got less good. However, uh, you don't have a lot of those right now. Uh, if you look at fighting types, we have five of them. And I think that only Mankey and Crib Brawler are all that worthwhile even. But Mankey had a lot of stuff going for it. Uh, it has U-Turn, it's got close combat for a really strong stab, and then you can Terra Fighting because it's got a really good attack stat of 80. Its bulk's kind of lacking, but you don't really care too much when you're running a Scarfer, and you can do plus speed minus special attack, and go really fast and start monkey crashing into other things. It was pretty good. Uh, you also ran Night Slash, so that way you can hit Giraffe Rig or Mistrevis. No, you just want to hit Giraffe Rig, but it's still good. Uh, but then you also have like uh, Earthquake if you want to run that. So that way you can hit some grounded types if you want. Like I uh, hit Magnemite or Electric types. You have options there. Fire Punch, Ice Punch. You also have Gunk Shot if you want to hit a Fairy type, but those don't exist yet. So it's something to keep in mind, but not yet important. It also got Rock Slide, Stone Edge. So if you want to hit Larvesta, which is a really good fighting check, then you can deal with that. There's something else that I don't want. I swear there was something else. I mean, there's Acro, but that's not really what you want to run. Uh, you can run Drain Punch. I think it was just that it has really good coverage moves. Ice Punch, Poison Jab, Gunk Shot, Ice, uh, Fire Punch, Ice Punch. And then you got Seed Bomb if you want to run that. It, it's got a lot going on. But it's Speed Tier plus a really good attack stat made it a really good Scarfer. And it's even faster than Scarf Rufflet or Scarf Pawniard. Meaning, it's got some pretty good usage. I think it's going to get better as it goes on, because people really want to have answers to Pawniard. And even then, this is still good against Giraffe, right? Because it's got U-Turn plus Night Slash. So, if you wanted to run that, and then uh, Stone Edge. It's really hard to be able to wall this effectively, especially when it's got such a good attack stat. And then also, if you want to, and your opponent doesn't have another fighting resist, you can just Terra-type fighting close combat, and start breaking through a whole bunch of stuff, just because of how strong it is on baseline. It's a good mod. Try running more of this. Next we have, after Mankey, we got Tinkatink. Uh, this is pure utility. I, I don't think it's all that good myself because it's got 45 attack. And then although it's got 45, 64 in defense and special defense, and that's pretty good bulk, and it's also one of the few users of knockoff, I think it just doesn't do too, too much because you got knockoff, play rough, thunder wave, and then stealth rocks. And that's kind of what you always want to run on this. And then you get some pretty alright special defense bulk, and then you can run some defense as well. And you can get kind of bulky, but I feel like even at 15, as its positive nature, when like Mankey 
runs gets 14 on baseline and you just need a little bit of investment to get up that high and with this you need a positive nature plus a whole bunch of investment i don't think it's terribly good knockoffs probably like the main selling point but i i wouldn't recommend using it oh also because although it can get up to uh 16 speed with a plus nature uh you kind of have to give up on a lot i feel like this is definitely going to drop into a lower tier and it'll be okay there, but its main issue right now is that it wants to run, it wants to go back to generation one and run 252 in every stat, so that way it can do everything that it wants to do, be a strong knockoff user, have a good play rough, have enough bulk to be able to take special hits. It's, it just can't do all of it. It's, it's down the slope for a reason, unfortunately. It's interesting mon, but you're probably better off using something else. Next up, we have Larvesta. And Larvesta was a pretty alright Pokemon in the last generation because it had Flame Body, and then you can run Eviolite, and then you also had Morning Sun, and then made a really good Fighting Wall. And now it's okay. I don't think it's fantastic because Fighting types have gone out of the meta. But it still pairs up well versus a lot of top stuff. I don't want this one. That's better. But this pairs up kind of well versus Giraffe Rig because you got Stab U-Turn, Pawniard because you have st uh, Stab Flare Blitz, and that's cool. You also pair up well against Toad School because Stab Flare Blitz, and you got these good things going on. But I feel like its main issue is that Bug Fire, although it's a cool typing and you can burn as well as have a Fighting Resist, so stuff like Mankey isn't as good. It's A, exceedingly weak to Stone Edge, so you can hit it even, like, Mankey doesn't even mind this too, too much. Like, it just is a predict. It's annoying, but you can still deal with it. And secondly, Stealth Rocks. It has a crippling weakness to Stealth Rocks, and it hates seeing them all the time. And losing 50%, although it's a unique trait, it's not a good unique trait that you want to have. Uh, it's still all right, though, because it's got Flare Blitz U-Turn, and then if you want, you can, like, run Leech Life. It also has... Wild Charge, it's got Zed Headbutt. It's got options that you can run, and they're not horrible to run. Most notably a Wild Charge if you want to be able to hit uh, Rufflet a bit harder. And... No, I feel like you just want to... Yeah. The issue with Wild Charge... Oh, no, 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 you can hit the Waters. You can hit stuff like Quaxley if it wants to switch in. You don't want to use it for Flying types because they're neutral to it, and why not just run Flare Boots instead? But... You have a pretty good move pool that you can you can mess around with. You have Flame Charge if you want to make this into a sweeper. That's really annoying to deal with. I've seen that a lot of last gen. You got options. Also, you can still run the bulky set and it'd be okay. But with how many, with Glimmit around and a whole bunch of hazards. Although you can get up to 16 speed and get 55, 55, 55 in all your bulk, and that's pretty good. Uh, I don't think this is too worth running. We'll see how it pans out as the meta develops, but I'm not expecting this to stay too well, too high up. So, unfortunate there. That's an entire box filled up with all the mons. Wow. So then, next box, because we still have a little bit more before we get to the end of the little cup you ban list. So next we have Mudbray. I mentioned this before, and it's okay. Like, its its main issue was that Mistrebus is around, and now that Mistrebus is no longer around, it'll get better. But it needs time to actually come into its own, because it can do Eevee Light Stamina stuff. It's got Stealth Rock, it's got Earthquake, it's got Heavy Slam for a really good neutral hit, and it's absurdly heavy as it is, so you can do stuff with that. You got Close Combat. How does it get Stone Edge? Does it get Stone Edge yet? It does get Stone Edge. I think that it got that in this generation, so that's really cool. It's got High Horsepower. Don't actually need to run that anymore, because uh, Earthquake is just straight up better. No, not Earth Power, Earthquake. E. But EQ, Heavy Slam, Facade, you have Iron Def You don't need Iron Defense. You also still have the Sleep Talk set. Oh, one of my favorite sets of all time that you could run that was unfortunately kind of bad because of how the meta worked out was that you could run uh, Rest, Sleep Talk, and then you could run uh, Earthquake, and then Heavy Slam. You could also run like Stone Edge or Rock Slide in that slot as well. But you would, what you would do is that because you've got like really good bulk, you can run uh, like something like this. No, you run that, and then you can run like the rest into speed or whatever. 
And then what you would do is that because your opponent would keep on attacking into you with Eviolite and Stamina, you would just keep on getting really, really bulky. It was a really, really fun set to run, but I don't think it cut. It wasn't very good because there was a lot of Grookies and other stuff running around. But this guy could possibly make a comeback. I think this is definitely going to be a Shining Star once a lot of stuff gets balanced out. It's really strong because it's got 100 base attack. 70, 70, 55 is phenomenal bulk, especially combined with stamina, and then you got rest as a move, and you kind of don't mind resting, because like, with other mods, it's just like, well, why would I run a rest? That's going to waste turns. Yeah, but if you have stamina, then those turns aren't even a waste, because your opponent has to attack into you, they can't status you, and then you just get more stamina boosts. We'll see how it turns out. I'm hoping for big things from Mudbray. It's a cool boy. Next, we have Grievard. Uh, I don't think this is particularly good, but it's got Fluffy, so that's worth some points. Uh, so, no worry. Yeah, if you like Fluffy, so that means the contact moves to half damage, and you can run some... Actually, it's got 50, 60, 55. That's some pretty alright bulk. And then you can run something like that if you wanted to. Its speed tier is not very good, but... I don't think you care too too much about that. It's a cool dog. I'm expecting it to fall off because it's not great. But you can like crunch Destiny Bond. You got some Fang moves in here. You don't have a good Ghost type attack, so it's kind of. Eh. You got Shadow Sneak. Shadow Sneak's pretty good though. It's good for revenging Mistrevious and other stuff. But you need to be able to deal with. It's got Bulldoze, but like its main issue is that even though it's got Fire Fang and some Ground type moves, is that. Ponyer just walls it. It's like, yeah, but I can use Fluffy and I'll be able to take a hit or two. But do you really want to do that, though? It's going to drop pretty hard. It doesn't have recovery. It's got rest, but unlike Mudbray, you don't really want to run that too much. Uh, it's okay. I think it's going to drop off because it's no longer a new toy anymore. But it has some usages, I guess. I'm not expecting too much from this. It's got Psychic Fangs, so preventing screens, I guess. Would not recommend using this. However, what I do recommend using is Crab Brawler. And the reason why Crab Brawler is interesting is because it's a fighting type that also reaches 17 speed like Mankey. But the important part is that it's actually kind of bulky. 47, 57, 47. That's a pretty alright bulk. And obviously, like, weird IVs aside. Uh, it's got a lot going for it. It's got Iron Fist, and then you have Eviolite, and then you also have a whole bunch of uh, punch moves. You got... Uh, you don't have Fire Punch, surprisingly, but you have Drain Punch, Ice Punch, Thunder Punch, that's what you want to run. And then you can run 4th move, you can run like Brick Break if you want. Oh, like, uh, let me get these. So Drain Punch, Ice Punch, uh, Thunder Punch. And then you can run Brick Break if you want to get rid of Screens, you can run Crab Hammer, so that way you don't get lulled by Larvesta if that gets more popular. You can run Liquidation if you want, Rock Slide if you want to hit Flying Types. You can also run bulk up to make yourself really annoyingly hard to deal with. I don't want that set spread, but you have options with Crib Brawler, and Iron Fist makes this even better because then Drain Punch, Thunder Punch, and Ice Punch all have stronger base powers. It's got some good stuff going on. I'm hoping this is going to continue, especially because it matches up pretty well against Ponyar, Toad School, even Diglett, because it's got some really good bulk. It's not good against Rufflet, but it's good against like Mastiff. Uh, Snover. It's good against a lot of stuff just because of Ice Punch, Thunder Punch. Like, Quaxly doesn't want to deal with this. Uh, I mean, Ghastly. Like, even, like, neutral hits from this plus Iron Fist are going to hit kind of hard because it's got 82 attack. It's got some potential. I'm hoping to see good things from it. And then the final mod that did not drop is Bramblin. And I don't understand how why people were using this. Like, cool, it's got Wind Rider... And like that was kind of cool because then you can really effectively counter lead Surskit because it's immune to Icy Wind and that's what you would want to hit this with anyway. And you can run Eevee that it's got Rapid Spin and it's also got like a Bullet Seed so that way you can get through some some Sashes and stuff like that. And then you can still do uh, Shadow Sneak and you can run Physically Offensive. And it's got options and it's kind of cool because it's also got like a Strength Set for Recovery. But then you look at the stats and they're kind of eh, because 40, 30, 35 bulk is pretty bad. And I think that the biggest issue that it had was that uh, Giraffe Rig running Sap Zipper could blank this entire set and there was nothing you could really do about it and the Giraffe Rig just gets three turns off of it. And although it's got 65 base attack, it's, it's like Shadow Sneak would be good and so is Bullet Seed. 
And being a rapid spinner is always a plus. And even a rapid spinner that can block for itself, pretty great. But its main issue is that the meta is really not hospitable to it right now. I'm expecting it to kind of stay up here because having shadows, like just having this much utility on a mon, like obviously you're gonna have Toad School and Toad School's probably just straight up better. But even then, Braylon's a pretty all right side grade because it's got Shadow Sneak in order to revenge kill, Strength Sap to keep itself healthy if you want to do that. Uh, its main issue is Ponyard, of course, because Strength Sap. But you have options. It's it's kind of okay. Uh, speed tier is 16. It's I don't think it's awful, but the main issue is that there's just not too much going on here that you really want to be working around with. We'll see if it's okay in the future, but right now I'm not seeing it. It has potential, but that's just kind of it. Alright, but that was the top mons in the meta. There's quite a lot going on there and quite a lot of different mons that are doing crazy stuff, but we got a pretty good thing going here. Uh, I'm hoping that it, as the meta more develops more, we get more bands for the broken stuff, like Giraffe Rig, possibly Brufflet, that we'll get a lot more of a cohesive metagame, get it less broken, get more stability in there. But I'm not I'm not opposed to how, how like, this is a pretty good assortment of mons, not gonna lie, I, I like it, I like it. All right, so that's all I have for today. Thank you very much for tuning in. I appreciate any amount of time that you guys can give to this. It's, I mean, this is a passion project because I just like this tier and I think that's really helping me in general, just enjoy the tier more as well as I'm going to crunch the community a little bit more. Thank you all for checking this out. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in another video.